Hi guys, welcome to the video. My name is Live Mondo, and in this video we're going to be covering some of the updates and some of the some of the reveals and some of the things that Bungie have have released and hinted at and teased over the past couple of weeks. Now, uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I made a video on Destiny uh, Two. It's been a while since I made any sort of video. I don't know if you guys can tell. I'm still struggling with uh, the back end of a chest infection. I haven't been really interested in doing too much in the last two weeks. And before then, I was out of the country for a week. So it's been about three, three or four weeks since I made a video. So I apologize it's took me so long. But I'm back. I'm almost at full health. The videos will be coming pretty, pretty... Uh, full on Thursday I've got the second part of my uh, Operation Destiny video where we talk about the stories and how they've evolved or not since Destiny 1 and then Saturday it will be my Crucible video uh, detailing how Crucible's changed and you know, talking about some of the stuff for the future some of it I'm going to be kind of hinting at in this video so if you do, I'll, I'll, when I get to that point, I will point it out that this is what we're talking about. And hopefully you guys will be interested enough that you'll check out the next videos. So, uh, Destiny 2, the Go Fast update. That's what we're going to start with. It was a bit... When I seen the video for jo when Josh Hamrick spoke about, you know, how they have made some mistakes in the past and stuff... I kind of thought with that kind of candid observation that they were, this was going to be a really good update. And it, it did turn out to be a pretty good update. Until we got Nightfall specific rewards that one didn't really feel like that. The sniper is awesome. So I have a feeling that the auto rifle and the hand cannon are going to be along those lines. They're going to be awesome as well. A ghost, a ship and a spiral. If the, go if the ship and the spiral are as... I don't even know the word. I don't even know the word. Useless as the ghost. Then they are not stuff to be chased. People will chase it because we're hungry for new stuff. But it's not really a chaseable thing. I definitely did not chase the ghost. This I actually helped a friend of mine do the prestige before this. This is what got me back into playing Destiny. And I've always liked the inverted spire. So the, this is just a normal nightfall run. It's nothing special. It's just something that you put the... You know, some gameplay, and my channel's kind of known for doing Nightfall, so I figured the first solo thing I was going to do back in Destiny 2 was a solo Nightfall, and it turned out it was really, really easy. Uh, I actually attempted the Prestige after this. I gave it one go on the Prestige. Uh, I got to the boss, got into the very last damage phase, and I forgot I had it on. I never forgot. I just, I'm not in that train of thought with Destiny 2 at the moment. I had it on Arc Singe. I popped my super on him from my normal place and he just melted me because he was using arc. So uh, I, I was about five seconds from beating him. I could do it. I could have done the, the prestige if I'd have maybe started earlier in the week. I didn't. There's no point in doing it now. But if you guys do want to see solo nightfall, solo prestiges, leave a comment and I, I will put them on the channel. So the, the, the go fast update. Nightfall rewards. Ghost, Ship, Spiral. The Ghost would have been awesome if they'd have done it along the same lines as the, the Raid Ghost. Where it done stuff in strikes, specific stuff in strikes on Nightfalls that no other Ghost was doing. But the fact that it's just... It does what some of the worst Ghosts in Destiny do. Elemental uh, uh, Gunsmith Telemetry on all ele Elemental Gun Types. Okay. Uh, scan stuff on Nessus. Okay, well, you can get legendaries that do those things. So I just don't think it, it does enough to be classed as an exotic or even a Nightfall-specific reward. Or more importantly, an end-game reward that we need to do 20 to 30 Nightfalls in some cases to get. It's just not good enough. But the auto-rifle on the hand cannon, I believe, will be. Because from the look of the sniper and the feel of the sniper, it's not a reskin, as we know. But it's a very good sniper. So... Yeah, it's worth chasing. I personally didn't chase it because I didn't play last week. Uh, but next time the paramedium comes around, you <laughs> you can put money on it. I'll be there grinding it out to get it. 
nice to see the weapons all getting switched up. I felt like my scout rifles, even though I know that they buffed long range scout rifles in, in uh, PVE, I felt like the scout rifles I was using, the Eternal Blazing and the Nameless, were doing more damage. So it was nice to, f it felt like when the, when the when challenge mode come out, you were getting melted in the nightfalls. It was pr it was pretty. It was actually it was pretty uh, brutal how much damage you were taking and how much damage you couldn't do. But going to this nightfall, it actually felt easier than the original nightfall before challenge mode came out with this. So I felt as if my character was more powerful. Uh, I, ha I haven't had a chance to use Dawnblade. Uh, I was a little bit deflated when I found out that that level of type, that level of Dawnblade, uh, I don't know what you would call it, skating, whatever, is, is, is really more potent on PC and that PC users using some sort of hardware can Titan skate. That was a little bit annoying. I'd love a bit of Titan skating in D2 to be honest because as most people will know, I'm main a Titan. I have all three characters, always have had, but Titan's my baby, it was my first ever character in Destiny, I'd, I'd love to do a bit of Titan skating, and going back to D1, it was awesome to do a bit of Titan skating, but Twilight Garrison, oh yeah, I, I would do that, but it is what it is, we know, all console users know that PC, are, it's, a, it's not a port, they built a, a, a fresh game for, they, they, you know, they bit, it's a whole new build, so, it, is diff it works differently from the console version. There's no denying it. There's no. It's not even a conversation to have. So I kind of need to get off the case about it a little bit and just accept that things are going to be different on PC. That'll be difficult. Uh, I'm. I'm happy that linear fusion rifles seem seem to have a damage boost that makes them worth using for some people. I am never going to use a linear fusion rifle while it takes the place of a heavy weapon just not going to do it if it's not a sleeper simulant type of fusion rifle i don't think it deserves to be in a heavy slot and yes they have spoke about doing stuff with heavy with uh, the weapon slots and random rolls and what have you so until that happens i will stick with using my rocket launcher uh i was actually going to use a sniper for this but just for the that the, the, just for the the ad clearance the way that the way that a rocket can clear ads i mean let's be honest you're never really, and, and, and stuff like this, going to swap it out. and Because in a prestige, you can't swap it out. So, still a little bit of work needs done on that. But, the Go Fast update, to summarise, done exactly what they wanted it to do. It was a course correction. It gave us a glimpse of where we're going. It didn't go there. It just, we looked at, at the, in the direction we're going. And that's all it was meant to do. It was never meant to change the game in any great way, shape, fashion or form. It just... It's almost like a look to the future. And for that, it was very good. Uh, on Wednesday, on the 4th, 4th of April, they had, Bungie had a live stream where they'd done the Bungie bounty. Now, they've been doing it for an, an, uh, quite some time. They get a fire team of Bungie employees. In, in this case, it was uh, Cosmo, DMG, the two community managers, and two other guys, uh from behind the scenes maybe uh and they had uh deej was in the the studio with uh josh hamrick who is the sandbox lead and kevin yarns who is the senior crucible designer and deej kind of said at the start of the stream that it wasn't a reveal stream if that's what you're looking for sorry no reveals but they were going to be fielding questions in, in in between the matches to uh Kev kevin and josh that people were asking him on Twitter and Twitch. And then proceeded to review quite a lot. <laughs> if you didn't watch it, it's worth worth going on trying to find it on YouTube. I'm not sure. I think I watched it on Twitch. I watched it after. I didn't watch it live. Uh, I will try and find it and try and link it. So that if anybody's interested, they could watch it. It was very interesting. And here's some of the questions that were asked. As I say, you make your own mind up how much reveals were made. Uh, they were asked... Uh, why can't you move stuff as quickly as other games can? Other games can move it in a blink of an eye and it takes you months. And very, very straightforward answer. Other games don't have the amount of activities in them that we do. So when we move something, God knows what it can affect. 
you know, and the case in point was, to add into another question, about movement speed and stuff, players want to be able to run faster. Destiny 2's movement and running speed is exact same, well, running speed is exactly the same as D D1. Well, they tried to increase it, but upon playtesting it, they found out that it caused a bug that affected spawns and raids. Spawning and raids, or load times and raids. Uh, that's the kind of complexity that they're dealing with. So that's why it takes so long to do this stuff. They were asked why you only gave us two game modes in Crucible instead of what we're used to. And the answer again was very straightforward, made perfect sense. Wasn't what we wanted, but it was a it was a it was a, a common sense answer, which was, you know, that's all we're looking for. Uh, we're looking for change, but when we're asked a question, we don't want, well, it's technical, and, you know, we just want, why did you do that? Well, this is why we've done it. Ah, oh, that makes sense. I don't like it, but that makes sense why you would do that. And basically, if you've got two pools of players, it's easier to get stronger matchmaking, faster matchmaking times, less kind of glitchiness, less better connection, you know, across the board, you'll always have your matches with people, it seems like. It's something I'm going to speak about in the video on Saturday, the CRISPR video, I've been seeing the same gamer tags, the same name come up for weeks now for people cheating in Crucible. And there's videos about this one guy, and you see the video all the time, it's just crazy. And he's, it's been gone since D1, so I'm going to kind of point a finger to this then. But uh, uh, on the whole, you know, that, that was the idea was bigger pools, stronger matchmaking. Makes sense, but it, it wasn't necessarily what we wanted. These were the really interesting things, and I think some people might have already have seen something about this. Uh, the question was, are you thinking of including a new subclass, new elemental damage type, and or new weapon types into the game? Are you thinking of incorporating these things? And the answer was, can't speak about it, but yes to more than one of those. That's why Houndish Unknown Player, more console, have these clickbaity looking, they're not clickbait, but they kind of look a little bit like a new subclass, question mark. That's the question that brought that up. So, although they never admitted it or, or denied it, they just looked in that direction. So it could happen. We could get a new subclass, and to be fair, I think the game would benefit from having another subclass instead of having reskins of the old subclasses, which is exactly what they are. This is the most interesting question from the whole thing. They were asked, are you thinking of introducing your crucible modes? And after a, an, I wouldn't say an awkward pause, they all kind of looked at each other. These just kind of owned the question. Bearing in mind, he was the guy that said, we're not going to be revealing anything. And then he comes out with, well, let me change that question. Are you th working on anything at the moment that the Destiny community has never seen? And the answer was, I can't speak about it, but yes, we are. That seems like a little bit of a, it's not a reveal as such, but they, they are revealing that they've got something in the pipe that we've never seen before. And the fact that he's changed the question so that he could answer it in that way, that he could get that answer, led me to believe that, I mean... I'm not saying Bungie don't, don't want us to get excited about just about everything they do, because obviously they do. But this is something they thoroughly expect us to get really excited about. The fact that, the fact that Deej owned the question so strongly, and even asked it in the right context to get the right answer. So, uh, the Crucible video, this is another thing, and it's, it's, it, it was one of those things that when they said it, I was like, oh man. That kind of lends itself to that thing that I was that I'm talking about in this. So, this is the thing I was talking about at the start of the video. I have this idea of something that a direction they might go in. I don't know if many of you guys remember. There was hints, nods, uh, teases of maybe a new three v three multiplayer event coming in the May update. This isn't this. I think this thing will come in September and I think it will be it will be a welcome addition if it happens so I'm not saying it's gonna I have an absolutely 
absolutely no evidence of this happening. I just think it all fits in very nicely. So tune in that video and you'll you'll find out more about it. So yeah, the all these things that we're talking about, they've already confirmed that random rolls and weapon slots are very high on the priority. Uh they're all really good things. They're all, they're, they're all good things going forward in the game. Yes, we should have had them to start with, but there's no point in talking about that now because we didn't. Now we're talking about the game we have. These are all good things going forward. I believe the May update is going to be what the May update is going to be. It's going to be give us new stuff to do. It's going to change the kind of the way that we do what we do now. But it's not going to change the way the game works. Don't think it's going to be... It's going to be a breath of fresh air, but it's not going to be a breath of fresh air instead of having it outside, inside, sorry, we're having it outside. I don't think it's going to change the scenery and everything's going to feel completely different. I heard on one of the videos somebody saying, I've heard so many rubbish videos over the past couple of weeks. Just, one guy was talking about how he's played Destiny for five years and I thought, geez, did you play this for a year before it was out? 18 months before it was out? You know, just fire team chat's always good to watch as well. And uh, I'm digressing a little bit, but I'll just talk about this first for a minute. Fire team chat, IGN's fire team chat's always good to listen to because they, they, they I mean, it's IGN, so they're not exactly wet behind the ears. But when it comes to Destiny, they are the most ill-informed people you've ever heard, and they just they. They literally just try and own it, <laughs> you know, and they've been pulled up on stream almost for not knowing what they're talking about. And they're like, yeah, well, I should have done a bit more research. And it's like, what? Uh, I watched an episode where Grenada Jake was on it, and this was the last thing I was going to speak about. And I'm kind of following in. I, th I, you know, just to finish off my previous comment, the May update isn't make or break because they've already sold it. It's been bought by everybody that bought the season pass. They might make some more money off it, but you know, with, with people who now haven't bought it buying it, September is when the make or break is going to be because this is the first real big change to the the whole of the sandbox experience, the the base game. Don't expect the May update to completely throw everything up in the air because don't think it will just give us loads of new stuff to do which is exactly what we're wanting but I don't think it's going to change the real direction I think September's going to do that a la Taken King style so that's just my opinion the last thing I wanted to speak about which, but where I was going with the IGN thing was the player summit okay uh, that happens the 11th and the 12th I think of this month which is tomorrow, uh, where l community leaders of, of specific sectors of the community, so PV, PVP, news outlets, things like that, the community leaders in those different sections will get a chance to play test stuff that we haven't seen, I believe, the September update, or stuff from the September update. Uh, and give their feedback on it and also give their feedback on why they think the game is where it's at. I think it's a really good opportunity. But it's amazing how many people have come out and been like, yeah, I mean I mean I never got I never got invited to it. Now, it has been noted that they said that people that love lore, lore masters have been invited, and yet like the top three or four lore masters, none of them have been invited. And for me, if you're gonna invite someone from lore, it's gonna be Bife. And Bife hasn't been invited, so quite obviously they're not inviting Law Masters. But some of the PvP guys, Grenada Jake, he was on IGN Fire Team chat, and he was like, "Yo, I mean, uh, I, I never got an invite." And I kind of thought to myself, "Well, you never got an invite because this is for leaders of the community, not people that you know served the community when it suited them, left and badmouthed the game afterwards." You know, that's probably why. I'd be very surprised if Sir Demetrius got an invite because, as he said, uh, Dudstiny, as he called it, was bad for his channel. And I thought, well, wasn't your channel built on top of Destiny? So, just a little bit of personal, uh, it's my personal view that I think as a community, 
we should maybe start, you know, we, we I would like as a community, because I think the, the Destiny community is, it's a brilliant community, it's so passionate, it's, it's, it's engaged, involved, you know, even people that say that they've left the game, haven't played it in ages, and they're saying that on, on the forums, because they're, they're going back to see what changes have been made, what people are thinking about it. I, I think we deserve better than players who w weren't making enough money off this game, so they went to another game they could make more money off. Now, some people, and I, f I find this absolutely incredible, maybe it's because of my age, that YouTube, YouTube is something I do, it's a passion. I'm not a YouTuber, but I do make content, so I do think I'm a content creator, but I'm not a YouTuber. But if someone said to me, what's your job? This isn't my job. If, if I was earning 20 grand a month doing this, it wouldn't be my job. This is my passion. This is what I love. You know, my job's my job. Yeah, I could give my job up to do this, but it's still not a job. It's a passion. So when I hear people saying, yeah, you know, this is my job. I need to keep the money rolling in and stuff. Yeah, you've got an opportunity. Yeah, maybe, again, it's probably my age. I, I know, you know, because YouTube is a viable uh, financial uh, it's not. Not everybody can make money from doing this. So if you do get the chance to make money, you sh I think you should maybe show a bit more respect to the people that give you that opportunity rather than saying, uh, sorry, the game... The, the what I'm trying to say is people like Grenada Jake, Sir Demetrius, Holvey, all, all the kind of multiplayer guys, they all left the game because they said that they couldn't, basically, couldn't sustain their channel. And what they were meaning was financially. And they badmouth Destiny. Uh, I don't know about Hovey. I can't speak if Hovey did. Uh, Grenade the Jake did, and so did Sir Demetrius. Uh, they they kind of they kind of badmouth. Then you got someone like True Vanguard, who never left this game, who still plays Destiny 2, still makes these D2 videos, still snipes the backside out of people in Crucible, and has done ever since the games come out. Whose channel has seen the exact same level of growth it did in the first year of Destiny 1 still people that love this game. The game itself might not be what you expected, but the community never changed. The community, if you're good to the community, the community will be good to you. I hope you guys remember these people that left the community and left the game when it needed its its people. You know, I don't think people like Grenada Jake now should be invited on to anything to do with Destiny. Not being blackballed, but he doesn't play Destiny. You know, he'll maybe go on for a, an hour, a week, but then he gets bored and he's not not really interested. Whereas there's, I reckon now is the time for guys that you know are playing Destiny, who can who can best serve the community. So it's always been my belief, definitely. If you take someone like Slayridge, Slayridge left the game. Uh, he plays every now and again, but he never ever. He, he's part of the Destiny community. He never badmouthed the game. He just said, I don't think I'm going to do solo nightfalls anymore. And then he done a two-man callus, uh, I think the prestige, and then that was it. No bad mouth and nothing. He is a, he 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 was one of the, the first kind of big names, and and you know, solo artists within Destiny. So, he, you know, be interesting to see what he's got to say in this player summit. But I I hope that the players, I hope that the community remembers. Who was there for them? I keep saying this because it's something I believe in. I don't believe we should accept, settle for any less than what we believe we're worth. And I don't think I think we're worth more than money-hungry YouTubers who are using you to buy their next expensive watch. Uh, and that's about it. That's where I'm going to end this one. I'll have, as I say, I'll have a video out on Thursday, and that'll be the stories of Destiny. And then I'll have a video out on Saturday. I hope you guys check them out. It's always great speaking to you guys, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. I have missed this so much. Uh, you take it easy, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and I will speak to you in the next one.